timeline of when you know Zabira was taken out and you officially knew Michael would be coming in? How many days in between did you not have a fight? Were you concerned you weren't going to fight anything like that? Yeah, I believe uh, three weeks before the fight, I kind of knew that I might not have a fight, and then um, you know they gave me some names and. Uh, Michael was one of them. I picked him, but I was still waiting, and I was not sure if, you know, uh, he was gonna take the fight. Cause you know, the truth is, not many people want to step in on short notice. So I always tell them, look, can you just ask the other guys first, please? Because it's a yes from me. Right. Are you concerned that you know, with his weight and stuff? I mean, he's only fought at 145 twice, and he needed full camps to make that weight previously. Um, well, I, I hope everything, uh, you know, he makes the weight, and I think he will. He is a professional, but. I will say this, if he ends up not making weight, I will still take the fight and I'll let him keep his percentage because he took the fight on short notice. Oh, really? Um, is that something you can even do? Like, can you allow, can you tell the commissions, like... I well, I'll take it and just give it to him, and that's it. Have you ever done anything like that before? Mm, there was once, yeah, when I fought for Cage Warriors, uh, one of the guys missed weight and uh, he had some uh, health problems and he came up to me and said, look, I'm not feeling well and, you know, do you mind if I just, I can't try cutting weight again? And I just said, yeah, that's no problem, I'll just do it and that's it. Why did, who else were the options they presented to you and why did you pick Michael? I can't remember the other guy's name, to be honest, but uh, Michael was the hardest fight. Um, that's why I'm here. How do you switch preparation for what you were expecting from Zubaira for Michael? Um, you know, I'm ready for everything. You know, your preparation doesn't start eight weeks before. You know, the preparation is all the years leading up to that. So if you're not ready, then you'll never be ready. Do you think you're going to learn something new in eight weeks? Probably not. The eight weeks of the camp for me is about getting my weight down, is about getting in shape and perfecting, perfecting the skills that I already possess. Right, as far as... Uh Zubraya goes and everything that's going on. What kind of distractions has there been? Because it seems like there's a lot going on. Um, have you been able to focus the way you had hoped for this camp? Uh, you know, guys, I don't really want to address that situation anymore. You know, I, like I said, I've said everything I had to say to Ariel Havani. You know, if there's any more questions you guys have about that, just watch the interview. It, it, I am not trying to be mean or anything like that, but the thing is, it's a very complex situation and it's not something I can describe in just five minutes. It takes a lot longer than that. Since we don't have longer than that, that's why my answer is as such. Just in terms of the camp, but like how's preparation gone? Have you been able to focus? Great, of course, always. I'm always uh, focused. I'm always uh, ready to go. So nothing has changed there. Since you did that interview with Ariel, though, uh, Connor made that post where he kind of you know, explained how he felt about the fight. And he said, you know, I'm willing to fight next in line if I don't get the rematch. Um, who would you like to see him fight if he doesn't get Khabib immediately? Um, I mean, really, the, I would really want to see him fight Khabib next, if I'm honest. I think that's the fight that makes sense. Um, I believe he deserves that fight. He's made everyone UFC and including Khabib a lot more money than they ever have made, you know, so why not give him, you know, Tizros? He's been the guy that always took everybody on. There's been many change of opponents for him. He never blinked an eyelid, just took the fights, no problem. Never pulled out in his life. A true fighter, fighter's fighter, a real man. <clears throat> so give him the fight. How long? Have some water, sorry. <clears throat> How long would you want Connor to take Wait, for... dry as fuck. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> it's a good way to get an edit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to ask. I mean, if a rematch did happen, how long would you like to see Carr take? Because the, the argument from you know, you online or whatever is, you know, Carr's getting you a lot of time to make up the difference on the ground. Do you think you'd be ready to do that in like four months? Is it going to take six months, eight months, a year? Uh, yeah, it, I think six months would be a good timeline because obviously there's all the commission stuff going on that needs to be all settled um, and of course it requires a good camp, you know, it's not an easy opponent, uh, you know, there was a lot of mistakes made, uh, many things need to be corrected, so there's no need to rush, yeah. six months at least I believe. And the commission did say yesterday, uh, not to you know, drag this out too much, but they said you know, they felt Connor was one of the instigators of what happened on the night. He was trying to jump over the cage, and if it was up to them, if they had seen all the angles on the night, they would have held his purse and stuff too. Do you think any of that is fair, or do you think Connor was just being reactionary to what was going on there? I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> okay. uh, where does beating Michael Johnson put you in this division? Is it what you call it the biggest one of your career? 
Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, look at some of the guys he's beat. He's the only guy to beat Tony Ferguson. He's the guy that destroyed uh, Barboza and he brought it to him. Uh, you know, he's Poirier, you know, so many names. This guy's been there and done that, you know, he's been around the block a few times. So definitely my toughest challenge and uh, I believe it will put me in a very nice spot beating him. Yeah, does that kind of make up for lost time in a way? Because, you know, it's been, what, a year since your last fight? Is this, you know, break being challenging for you? It absolutely does make up for it because right now I've got all the attention, all the eyes on me that I need. I just need to make sure that when the time comes, I shine. At 0-2 right now, um, are you at all concerned? Is this like a must win for you? All of them is must win for me. You know, that, that's how I treat them. You know, to me, when I go into battle, I, I, I feel like this is a real war, you know, and that's one of the reasons I never pull out. Uh, to me, I feel like I'm, I'm in my castle and there's an army, an enemy army outside and they're saying, right, we're here to fight. How am I going to tell them, sorry guys, I'm not ready to come back tomorrow? No, I'm coming out and I'm fucking swinging and I'm fighting and I'm ready to die in there as always. With the uh, time away, it's been about a year since you fought. Any concerns about ring rest, any of that? What's that? No, no. Or what do you kind of think of yourself in the MMA space? I mean, you people talk about your record and stuff. I know you've taken a lot of hard fights, but you look at this card. People are talking about you, your fight, as much as anything else. Um, you know, does it records and stuff like that matter? I mean, we're talking right now about how the UFC could be trading Demetrius Johnson to One FC for Ben Askren. Like, is it really that much about who the best fighter is and stuff like that, or is it about? know them caring about someone like you regardless of your record? Uh, you know, I, I don't believe records matter. The only thing record shows is your path to where you are now. And if you look at my record and everybody else's, you know who's been through wars on their way up to the UFC and who was sitting in the trenches. And you obviously felt you took the hard path. What do you think? We know you did. There you go. So you're taking on Michael Johnson rather than Tucky Goff. Do you typically train for a fight with a specific game plan in mind, or do you train for a certain opponent? Honest to God, I always have the same game plan. I want to put as much pressure as I can, and I want to land as hard shots as I can. Uh, and that will be no difference. I will not take a step back. I will be marching forward, swinging hooks, and then let's see what happens. You had a chance to headline the UFC's event in Nashville. What did you learn from that? I mean, you gained a, a wider audience. What was that like for you? Uh, it was amazing, you know, I was very thankful for the opportunity. Honest to God, at that time I didn't really expect to get Cup Swanson and I certainly didn't expect to get the main event spot. But, you know, it came my way and I was delighted with it and like I said, I was very thankful. Um, I learned a lot, it was my first and only five round fight. Uh, and it was great to be in there, you know, with one of the best game, uh, guys in, in the division. Um, I would certainly love to have a rematch with him one day. Um, I'm still kind of kicking myself about that one. I do feel, you know, I could have done certain things a little bit different, and I'm hoping I, I'll get that opportunity somewhere down the line. Win or lose on Saturday, would you like to face Taki Gov in the future? Like I said, guys, this is the only fight I truly want right now. I'm, I'm here, I mean, no disrespect to Michael. It's, it's not that you know, I respect him so much as a fighter, but just the situation I'm in now, that's the only fight I, I see that makes sense for me in the future. So I definitely want that fight, 100%. You talked about a boxing match that you were offered uh, a while ago, six figures paid for your points. In future, is that something that would still interest you? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I still got uh, four fights left on my contract. Um, hopefully, I fight that out, and then we'll see what happens. You know, I would def definitely would like to be in the boxing ring sometime, for sure. I mean, why wouldn't I? Do you know what I mean? I mean, the guys can't even knock me out with head kicks. So why wouldn't I want to take a boxing fight? You know, but that's how I see it. Else? Give the well, two of us you said is the only guy that you want to fight. Is it kind of tough to focus or to motivate to motivate from like a jump smile? Is it is that uh, a strange position? Not at all. And, and not, don't make any mistakes about this. I mean, I realize you know he's in a bit of a situation now as well with the commission. So I let that play out. And if I have to take a different fight in between or different few fights in between, that's no problem. Business goes on as usual. So it's no problem to to zone in completely on this fight. And then not a problem. No. Nice. Is Conor going to be here on, on Saturday? Um, I will find out on Saturday, I guess. You know, he he's a very busy man. You know, he, he always is there to support me. Uh, he's always with me in my heart. Um, he's a true brother to me. And when I really need him, he's always there. You know, here in Moncton, let's be honest, my coach is here. And it doesn't really matter, you know, whether he comes here or not. I do know I still have his support, always.
Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, guys.